What's up, you dirtbags? We are live at Con Expo. We've got our first in-person podcast. And we are joined by my fellow co-host, Luke Payne. How we doing, man? Good, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. And we have a very special episode. We've got Mr. Doug Castles, BlackRock Excavating out of New York, joining us today. Doug, How's it going, guys? How we doing, brother? Welcome, Doug. Good. Excited to be here. Dude. Con Expo is Con Expo's a handful. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a lot. Currently today, it's Wednesday. Uh, what do you got going on the rest of the week at the show? I think I'm actually going home tomorrow, uh, but I got a couple of vendors and yeah. manufacturers I want to stop and see. And Visit then today still, and then yeah. we'll see. Any purchases made? Maybe there's there's a couple on the wish list. Yeah, yeah. I don't really have a wish list. I just have a <laughs> just two. Buy, just yeah, a buy just, list. Whatever. <laughs> My accountant found out I was coming here, and he, oh. he called me as I was getting on the plane. He was like, "No." So what do you mean no? He froze the accounts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like, "I know where you're going." I saw the I saw the plane tickets come across. I was like, "All right." But See when man. we get back. <laughs> yeah. it's like I'll let you know if we get anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Luke, you got your panel coming up here soon? Yeah, got uh, my panel is in a little bit here. Luke, you just had your first one. Yep, that was um, fun. It was electric. I yeah. mean, you had the whole squad up there. But that was how, good. How'd it feel? I mean, that's probably one of your first big, like, the, the room was ginormous. Ever since high school, yeah. That's the first time I probably publicly speaked. What was it about? Spoke. <laughs> um, speak, spoke. Uh, our panel is called Season But Not Too Salty. And it's about, like, industry issues, like employees, you know, different challenges people face and what people are doing to overcome them, basically. I would have went to that. So, I yeah, it, it was good. Was, Thomas did a really good job. Yep. Uh, Scott was fun to listen to. Chris? He, he led the, the show, too. Yeah, he did. moderated it. And, but it was really interesting to see, uh, you know, we had uh, female, three males, di- all different ages, and all different businesses as well. So it, it was really cool. Uh, I know a lot of people are interested, in Luke, in how you started your company, why you started it, like, nope. you know, you can just hear the gears turning of like you're you're 26 mm-hmm. and you've been doing this for how long? Like five years? Like yep. how does that make sense? And he even got a round of applause when he told, uh, started when he was 21. Like everyone's just like, let's go. Well, I, I just asked you that question. Like how yep. did, at 21 years old, I had my head so far up my ass. I didn't know if I was breathing or whatever. Like yep. how did you, at 21, that's impressive. See, and I think like the opposite. Like I think of Will Schuler in that same point. Because oh, he yeah. started his when he was 18. 15, yeah. 18. And... I mean, he's a forty-plus million-dollar company right now. You know, so How it's all real now. He's twenty-two. He just turned twenty-two. Forty million dollars. Forty million dollars is Who what is they did in twenty twenty-two. Will Schuler, if you were on Dirtbags University, you would have. You would have. You would have listened the, to the session. Just knowledge bombs the entire yep. time. Yep. Wow. He his story is incredible. I mean, yeah. there's there's he's done a podcast with Bill Witt, talked about it on there. Um, obviously, we I, need to wait, get him I on. Do, but I thought he was like a sixty-year-old man. I do follow no. him. Oh, no. I had no idea he was yeah. that young. Yeah, he's 22. My daughter's 18. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, he's, he, in, he's incredible. He, he, he's, he's incredible. Awesome. Good, good yeah. friend, too. And Luke, the bachelor party. Yeah, story. that was fun. That was fun. We, uh, we had met on the webinar, and I was leaving for my bachelor party like two or three days after the webinar. He's like, what are you guys doing? I was like, oh, I'm going here in Montana. He goes, can I come with? I was like, yeah, sure. So he flies out, and he spent the week out with us. That's Never awesome. met him before. Awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So it was, I was. Well, I, I guess, I guess when you're a $40 million company, you can kind of, well, you got in, some leeway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ties yeah. in well too, of just like you get to do what you want when you run the place yep. and when you own a company, mm-hmm. usually, I mean, sometimes your customers are telling you what to do, but. Correct. Will does it, he does it really well. I mean, he yeah. sounds like he's got a really solid team, got a really, really good like leadership team structure behind him. But yeah, for being fucking 22 years old. There's a lot of, there's a lot of young kids now. You, you both of you guys that are starting to starting businesses and starting to make waves and starting to make movements because you understand how people want to be treated. Yep. Sure. I was different. When I started, I was screaming and yelling at everybody. Mm-hmm. I was running around acting like I was building Amazon buildings yep. when all we were doing was putting septic tanks in the ground. So it, it's different. You guys were taught a different way of speaking to people and treating people and doing doing things for people. I'm learning that now. Yeah. And I'm, for all intents and purposes, I'm 10, 15 years older than you. Yep. And I'm just learning what you already know. Yeah. So the advantage that you guys have over even somebody like me, who's not even that much older than you, yeah. it's it's exponential. For mm-hmm. sure. So like, I guess if you put yourself in Luke's shoes, for example, you know, at that age, like where were you at? Like you said, your head was so far up your ass. Like where were you at at that At 26 point? or 21? Yeah. 21. I don't remember. Really? I, I don't remember. I don't remember much of that. Not because of drugs or alcohol or anything. I never was into any of that. It was just my what I what I remember was like twenty four. Okay. 
So I had, I was, I had my own apartment. I was living with, with my girlfriend at the time. We met in college. Um, things were, were not good. Yeah. They, I hope she does. Anyway, so they were not, they were not good. We, we, we were not a good match. Yeah. You know, we were just struggling to get by and trying to make ends meet. Uh, we ended up breaking up. I ended up moving back into my mother's, and that's when things really started to semi move. Yeah, this was like 24. Yeah, I was about 24. Yeah. Um, but during that time, I was, I was, I had made a lot of. I was in business for myself, or yeah. so I pretended to be, yeah. and I had made a lot of decisions and moves that were now coming back to bite me. Right. I was bouncing checks. I was one job paying for the other. I, I really had no idea what I was doing. Um, the cops started showing up at my mom's door. I was getting arrested on warrants. Really? You know, warrants for warrants for missing court and yeah. things like that. Yeah. For you know, bouncing a check or a traffic thing. Because back then, you know, in New York State, you did a crime, you you actually got in trouble. Yeah. It doesn't happen now. Yep. Yeah. But <clears throat> you know, so you miss court. They they put a, a bench warrant out for you, and and you the cops would come to your door and they would take you away. And you just go with them? Well, you didn't they have a choice. They'd kick your ass. They were cops. Yeah. So you, you went with them. And, and so I spent from 24 to 27 dodging those issues and not really handling them, but also trying to run a business and figure all of that out. So I, I had a very interesting, so like where you are now, where you are, you guys, your, your minds are clear. You guys are focused. I had about... I had two or three different things going on in my life that yeah. I couldn't focus. Yeah. But I knew that I wanted to be, I, I knew I wanted to be here, but I was way down here and didn't know how to get there. Yeah. For, for clarification, is, was that BlackRock? That no, that was a, that was a, that, uh, 24, that was another, I'm not sure. I think I, I started BlackRock in 2004, so anybody okay. wants to do the math, go ahead. Um, I, the first company, I had to close because we, we got into a site contract for a small bank and the, the contractor never did soil borings. Mm. So we found thousands of yards of contaminated soil yep. and then they hired us to dig it all out mm -hmm. and then they needed a fall guy for, for the bank. And I have this on good authority now because I know the president of the yeah. bank. Yeah. We actually do all our lending with them now. So we got fired during building their building and now really? we do all, their, all, all our lending with them. They just, uh, they just gave us the biggest loan they've ever written. Really? Yeah. Really? Out of anyone? Out of anyone. Wow. From that branch. That's from cool. the branch that I was hired to, to, to do the site work for and then got fired because I really didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. Um, but you learned a lot, though. Oh, I learned a lot. Yeah. I learned, I learned a lot. You know, they, they threatened lawsuits and all that crazy stuff, and I, I just I figured, well, if I just close the business, I can hide from that. Yeah. You know, and then started BlackRock, and I said, I'm just going to stay small, and I'm going to do it right. Um, Were you doing septics right away as well? No, I wanted to. I wanted to do whatever. I wanted to do like what Luke does now. I yeah. wanted to do, you know, medium-sized site projects, and I wanted to have all kinds of equipment. But I didn't have, I didn't have the wherewithal. Sure. I didn't have the backing. I didn't have the support system. Uh, you know, I got two younger brothers. Um, they're great guys, but they took they took a lot of time, and they're from from my parents. You know, my mom was a, was a recovering alcoholic. Uh, my dad, at 62 years old when he passed away, couldn't read or write. So I had this, I had this interesting dynamic of me being very smart and them not being available. Like I didn't have that, 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 like we said before, that support system. Yep. From my parents, like when I got in trouble and I needed my dad, yeah. he always bailed me out. But when I needed advice on whatever. He wouldn't give it to me because he was jealous. Sure. My dad was a very jealous man. He always wanted his own site company. He always wanted his own company, and uh, I, I was doing. It. Um, and I think it, I think it made it. And it hurts me to say this because yeah. he's, he's not here anymore. But I think it made him very jealous. So it, it was there was a it was a big block there. Um, in fact, when I bought my first machine, I bought it from uh, from Marshall Machinery yeah. in Honesdale, Pennsylvania, at the time, and uh, I had no credit. I had a four thirty credit score when I bought my first machine in 2010. And uh, I said, uh, I said, I'm gonna get into excavating, I need a machine, I want a Kubota. I went to a local dealer and they laughed at me. Um, and then I went to, the, to Marshall Machinery, who I still do business with to this day because of the way that they took care of me. 
Um, kind of. They, uh, <laughs> they dealer financed this used U45. It was a, it was a $45,000 purchase. I had $20,000 to put down. I put the $20,000 down and then they financed me for five months, five or six months, do the really? math, yeah. at $5,000 a month wow. for a machine that barely weighed 5,000 pounds. Right. Wow. This tiny little thing I could pull is, my pickup truck. Is yeah. that just to balance their risk because you had a 430? <coughs> oh, Luke, I don't know. All, all I know is somebody said yes. Yeah. I took it and ran. Made it happen. What? Made it happen. Uh, I didn't. No, yeah. I, I didn't. We're getting there. <laughs> That's um, a good part here. So it was supposed to be a six-month loan. And, uh, and if anybody from Marshall Machinery is listening to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, it was supposed to be a six-month loan. It went on for 10 months. I had one payment to make. Remember, there were 5000 bucks a month, and I was paying my rent at my house, wow. my rent at my shop. I, I didn't, I was trying to make it on my own. Yeah. And uh, I didn't really have, the, I didn't have financial backing. I didn't have, my parents didn't have money. Yeah. You know, my parents were, my mom was a nurse and my dad was an equipment operator. There was no money. They were divorced. There was, there was no money. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they both, they're both not very, they were not very good with money. Nobody mm-hmm. ever taught us how to manage. Nobody didn't know anything about money until this year, yeah. actually. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so this tow truck shows up in my yard one day. It says Honesdale, Pennsylvania on the side, and I knew who it was. Yeah. And I, I took the key, and I walked over to the tow truck driver, and I handed it to her. And I said, uh, I said, you want me to load it? She says, you know why I'm here? I said, I do. Yeah. And she said, uh, she said, yeah, if you wouldn't mind loading it, that would save me some time. I loaded my own machine. No, wait. To get, it was repoed. To right? get re- it, was, it was repoed. It was done. It was repoed. With one payment left. One payment. One $5,000 or $5,000 payment. Now it's like, take it. I, I could I could call a hundred people. Yeah. You know what I mean? If if I didn't have the money. Yep. And so I mean I could probably call one of you guys. Mm. So yeah, let me touch on that. Why don't you think <coughs> you figured out that last payment? Because my, my focus was somewhere else. Yeah. You know, my focus was, was on was on trying to survive. Yeah. You know, I we'll do we'll do a couple hundred thousand dollars a month now. Mm-hmm. And and back then we were lucky if we did five thousand a month. Yeah, sure. I see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can blame it on you can blame it on administration. You can blame it on housing markets. You can blame it on. But at the end of the day, it was me. Yeah. It, the problem was me. The problem wasn't that I was young. The problem wasn't that I mean you're a shining example of that. It it wasn't that I was young. It wasn't that I wasn't. I just didn't have the drive. I didn't have the. I, I didn't have it. But I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. So the lady, show, I load the thing onto the thing, and this is where the story gets really good. So buckle up. I'm sitting there in my shop, crying, pissed off, upset. Call my mom. She doesn't have any money. Call my dad. He never had any money. It, so I, I had a, I had all my trucks were paid off at the time. I had two trucks, and I had this, this, this F450 Mason dump, and I took it to the pawn shop. Hmm. I pawned the fifty thousand dollar truck. Five grand. Seven grand. Because I didn't have the gas. I didn't have the money for the gas to go out to Pennsylvania to pick the machine up. Really? I pawned the truck, got the money, drove out to Pennsylvania, picked up the machine, came back. Wow. It cost me $13,000 to get that thing out of hock. Thank God I knew the owner of the, the pawn shop, and he was very good to me. I would have lost that thing 10 times. Wow. Yeah. It took me forever to pay off that debt. Yeah. When I got the truck back, my trucks are always spotless. When I got the truck back, there was a half inch of dirt over the whole truck. That's how long it sat, mm-hmm. wherever they were keeping it. And they said to me, they're like, you sure you want to do this? I'm like, are you sure? And I'm like, I don't have a choice. No. I got the machine back, working, 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 working. Still didn't pay the loan off the, the, the pawn shop debt. I, ended, I had a service truck. It was an F-350 Larry, an extended cab. I sold that truck because I realized that I needed the dump truck back because the dump truck was more important than the service truck. Yeah. But again, I had no money because my money management was terrible. The work was slow, whatever the reason. No. At the end of the day, it was me that was the problem. And it was my mindset. So I sold a $35,000 truck to a friend of mine for $10,000. Went and got the truck out of hot. And then I drove an F-450 Mesa dump every day on dates to the grocery store everywhere I went for two years. Really? And that's, that's the first story. That's like, that's how we, that's, that was where we started. That's where I started to turn 
the page. I started cleaning up all the legal issues. Right. I was in court three days a week for a year yeah. in different municipalities. It's a waste of time, really. Oh, my God. And money. money. Yeah, a lot of money. I didn't have a driver's license. So did you guys know that when you turn 18 you or you turn 21, you have to renew your license, mm -hmm. right? Everybody knows that, right? That's a common thing. Yeah. Well, I knew that, too. But my license was suspended for, for not answering tickets, so I didn't renew my license. Now, I'm 27 years old, I clean up all the bullshit, yep. and I go to the DMV to get my license back, and they're like, no. I'm like, and the whole, so the whole time I had no license, right? The wow. whole time Thank I God had didn't no get license. Stopped. Yeah, right. <laughs> I did, all the time. And all the time, and they gave me tickets and brought me in and did all this crazy stuff. So I was the only one in town with a construction company and couldn't afford dinner. Yeah. So this guy, he, I would do odd jobs. Like, he, uh, Doug, I have this rental. Go rip the carpets out of it. And I'd go rip the carpets out. Dirty, disgusting, nasty carpets. Yeah. And then I'd go back to him, and he'd hand me a $100 bill for four hours worth. And, and to me, it was just like at the time, like 25 bucks an hour. Mm. You know it's what I mean? pretty solid, yeah. Yeah, but at the time, I'm like, uh, you know, I needed more, yeah. Yeah. but I, and then, or he'd, he'd say, hey, I have this, I'm buying this secondhand used dumpster an hour and a half away. You mm -hmm. want to go get it? And give me 350 bucks. So mm -hmm. like the amount of odd jobs and small things I started doing just to make ends meet, Yeah. you know, I had, I had really good landlords and I had, I had, you know, the guy at the pizza place and, and some really, at that point I had some really good friends that really really kind of rallied around me and saw that I was working hard yeah. and they did everything they could for me. So I think I just want to touch on, because, you know, your past is a lot different than, I, I'll even say like Luke and I's mm -hmm. past. Like we grew up, um, our, our parents are still together. You know, our, our, our parents are very motivating to us. They, you know, empower us to start businesses, to do this stuff. Like, do you think that that has helped or hurt you with how you grew up and in, in your past and like to where you are now and what you do know and what you have gone through well now my my mother is one of my biggest supporters sure yeah you know once i started once i started doing the right thing my mom and my stepdad really stepped up okay because they were at that point they were able to yeah you know my mom was my mom was i don't know my mom was probably 10 12 years sober at that point mm -hmm. you know my stepdad i think had probably 20 years sobriety back at that point mm -hmm. you know so that brings a whole different level of insight yeah um you know so they they really helped even my dad was was much more involved as i started to clean up my act i mean my dad was my dad all my dad ever had was his name and we share a name mm -hmm. so when i was screwing up he was pissed yeah and as i started cleaning it up he became more and more helpful because he, he wasn't afraid of being involved so once i started cleaning everything up it, it really started a chain reaction but as far as as far as helping or hindering, I think it helped. Yeah. Totally. I think it really helped me. And, and this is nothing against people who have the support of their families. For sure. But I, it really showed me a side of myself that said, you're capable of anything. Just go to work. I mean, I remember going into a bank probably six months after my machine got repossessed, asking for a line of credit. What the fuck was I thinking? Yeah. You know what I mean? And I had long conversations with this guy from the bank. And he wanted to help, but the bank said no. And I kept having that conversation with different bankers and different people and, and, and equipment manufacturers and truck people. And you just keep having, what, what that whole situation taught me was just keep talking. Yeah. Keep putting yourself out there. Keep, but you're very good at talking. Keep you're doing talking. the right thing. Yeah. You know, sometimes I just spew nonsense, but somewhere there's... Absolutely. Keep working hard. And that's, that's what, that's what not having the support of my family at that time. Now my family's very supportive, obviously, because nobody really supports you until you do the work. Yeah. You know, that's what they all talk about. Yeah. Um, it taught me to, it taught me tenacity and grit. Just keep going, keep fighting for what you want. Uh, you know, my brothers, they didn't, they didn't support a damn thing. Mm -hmm. My brothers thought I was the biggest jerk coming and going. And that, and that, that was hard too, you know, not having the support of my brothers yeah. who, you know, we grew up together, we're brothers. Not having the support of my brothers was probably one of the most damaging pieces to that whole beginning story. It's just like, I couldn't even call my brother and be like, hey man, I did a good, you know, I, I, I put in a septic system today and we did a good job. What the fuck you did, dog? Yeah. Like, you didn't. You didn't do that. You didn't, everybody, everybody always thought I was lying. 
And maybe that's because at the time, I embellished a lot. Right. Because I was afraid of, I was afraid of people seeing me as a failure. I was afraid of people seeing the things that I had, that I was doing wrong. I was doing so much wrong in the beginning that it just, I, and then you have to hide it because it was all lies. So now you have to try to hide it from your friends and your family. Right. And it, this was before social media. So I could, now I could go put a bunch of pictures up all over Instagram. We just had this conversation to make it look like I'm the king of the world. Yeah. Yep. You know, back then you didn't have that ability. You didn't have anything to hide behind. All you had was your name. And what people were saying about you. And I didn't have a good name and people weren't saying good things. You know, there was, it was tough. Not having the support of my family was very tough. No. I think that drove, well, obviously it drove you to do the things oh, that you it, do today. It pissed me off. Yeah. I was, I didn't talk to my, my I didn't talk to, so my, my dad, I did a job for my father. <clears throat> he had a little side business. I did a job for him. He owed me a certain amount of money. He handed me half that money at one point. And I said, Dad, I need the other half. Yeah. You know, because I was scraping. And he's like, no, I'm not paying. Long story short, and again, this isn't, I'm not trying to trash talk anybody, but it's just, just to show people what you go through. So anyway, long story short, he, my dad and I get into it. We start yelling at each other. My other brother, my brother, my little brother, who's, twice the size of me he's built like the incredible hulk he grabbed me he grabbed me by the neck threw me on the ground choked me out because i was yelling at my dad because my dad owed me money wow true story wow true story and i don't remember if i swung at him i i, I probably did i i don't i don't know but i didn't talk to my dad for two years on a regular basis After, yeah i would call i'd ignore his call he'd how about, call how about your brothers he didn't talk I got kicked out of my mother's house because I was living in her basement at the time. I got kicked out of her house, had to go live with a friend of mine's family on, a, on an air mattress in an, in an old bedroom yeah. because I didn't have a place to go. But my mom kicked me out because she knew that I'd be okay. Like, she knew that You're gonna figure it out. Doug can figure this out. No. Doug's got to go. Have you, have you two ever had that conversation? Like My brother mom, and I? No, you and your mom. Like, Mom, thanks for, thanks for kicking me out. Oh, I say, I say stuff like that to roll Do you? Yeah, no, my mom, is, my mom now is, she's, she's always been a good woman, but now she's, she gets it. And, and I understand it. Because as a kid, you know, a 27, 28-year-old kid, you don't, I might have even been 25 at the time, you don't even, you don't realize. Well, you're, you're caught up in, you know, drinking beer and going to the races and doing just enough work just to get by. Yep. You know, that's, that was my life at the time. Yep. And you, you don't see it. You just see it as, I didn't do anything wrong. Yep. You don't see it as somebody just weighing the options and doing what they have to do. So that was, not having that support, man, that was, that was tough. And if I could say anything to anybody, it's just do what you think is right and people will come around. And if they don't, then they don't belong. Yeah, build that support system too. And if you're doing the right thing, you're going to find people. Like, Luke, I feel like you and I find so many people like that where you're doing the right <coughs> thing, they're yep. in business, they're, they want to make this thing work, and they just need to get connected with the right people. Well, now, I mean, how many times a month do I call you and All just the time, yeah. bitch and moan and yeah. scream and yell, <laughs> and I'll just start yelling about something? Okay, see you later, Luke. And, then, and that's it. That's the conversation. He doesn't even say it. Yeah, and then he's like, all right. You know, he's like, he's like, you good? You're going to go jump off a bridge? No, fuck you. And then that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've got a great relationship. Yeah, we're, yeah. Nobody else can have it, though. It's yeah. special. That's strictly, <coughs> strictly between you want You want to talk to this guy. Yeah. But, uh, Luke, I know a lot of our listeners, I've seen a lot where, so, you know, Luke is 21 when he started Black Iron. A lot of our listeners are 19. Yeah. I, I don't know why 19, but 19, mm. and they... I can tell have a company and and it, it's it's very inspiring we also want uh folks on patience as well because you can't build this thing overnight no uh, you're gonna have even more issues so it's i don't know what, do, what would you say to somebody who's 19 who has their whole lives ahead of them that's trying to build this thing overnight but also like keep them motivated to uh that it's funny that was the next piece of what i wanted to say i've got i at the time i've gotten much better yeah um, and there's people in this room that could attest to that. The, um, at, at, when I was younger, I wanted it all and I wanted it now. Sure. And I realize now that you can't, and I, I would, I would 
fight and claw and whatever I had to do to make that happen. And I think that's why I got myself in so much trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, and I had always been in some sort of trouble, even, even growing up. You know, I had with ADHD, I was one of the first kids in my area diagnosed with ADHD. I was the first one medicated for it in my area. I went to a private school <coughs> with 15, 12 kids at the time in second grade, and every, every four hours or something like that, I used to have to go down to the nurse and get a pill so that I could sit through class. Wow. You know, so to answer your question about patience, it's, you have to have it. You have to learn it. You have to be gracious. You have to, you have to be gentle. Gentle is more, in my opinion, being gentle is more important than patience. Because anybody who's starting a business, and you can attest this, you can attest this, we want it all and we want it all right now. That just comes with the territory. Yeah. You want to be the, you want to be the, you want to be the Amazon of, of, of marketing. For sure. You yeah. know, and you want to be Patillo. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't know who Patillo is, Google. I know who Patillo. You know, they're, yep. they're in my area, so I see them all massive. the time. Massive. Massive, yeah. massive. Uh, very interesting story there, too. You know, just a normal guy, work boots and jeans. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, sold, sold to a company and uh, his, his, his personal paycheck is like, I heard it's like $5 million a year. Probably. They hired him a driver mm -hmm. just because it was cheaper to hire the driver than pay his cell phone tickets. Really? That's what I've heard. I, I don't know. If I believe it because yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of stories like that. <laughs> yeah, with other I mean, yeah. It's, it's insane, you know. So the, the more important than patience because none of us have it. Yeah. We all work for ourselves because we want more. We want more. We, we, we think we can do it better than the next guy. Be gentle. Yeah. Don't go at everything like a like a China like a bull in a China shop. Mm -hmm. You know, go find the go find the, the, the guy who owns the quarry down the road, mm -hmm. a little quarry, and, and, and bring him a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know? Every couple of weeks try to buy the quarry from him for twenty bucks. I mean that's what I did. <laughs> you know, you you just yeah, I, that's I'm not, not that's not being gentle. I'm not, <laughs> but I'm not gonna buy the quarry for I'm not gonna buy the quarry for twenty dollars. Sure. And and looking back at that, all I was trying to do was just just make a French absolutely yeah. open a door you know I was now if I said if I walked into the quarry and tried to buy it for 20 bucks they'd, 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 they'd laugh at me yeah. <laughs> because I've opened the door yeah. but as a 26 year old kid 24 year old kid you know the, the, the quarry owner by me I bounced a hundred and thirty four dollar check and he's at the show so I hope this isn't live <coughs> but we bounced, I bounced a hundred and thirty four dollar check on a multi-million dollar business. What does $134 mean to anybody in this room? No. Nothing. But he came after me with, for that $134 and gave me every chance under the sun for years. Yeah. And wow. then finally took me to court. I heard I was the second person he's ever done that for. And he's been in business since the 70s. Wow. And now we do work for him because I was gentle. Yeah. And I took, I took all of their their anger towards me yeah. all of their disdain and all of their dislike and i just took it because i deserved it mm. i deserved all of that and now i'm friends with each one of him i'm friends with him and his children yeah so how do you do that without getting walked all over you know because i think yeah. a lot of these guys yes that sounds great take it but if they if they're walking on you yeah they're not the people you want in your circle and they're you can not, usually tell the difference. When yeah, someone's oh, walking yeah, you can, over, tell, yeah, you can tell when people are taking advantage. They're not people who have been through enough life that you're going to be able to learn from them. Mm -hmm. You know, this, yeah. guy, this guy bought, and again, I hope he doesn't mind me talking about it because I know he's going to hear this. The story I heard is they, they bought, they had an excavating company, they bought the quarry that they have now for like 150 grand in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And now it's one of the biggest quarries in our area. I mean, it's the places you can eat off the floor. It's gorgeous. Yeah. You know, they, they paint the screeners every year, and they, they, the same, they have the same employees from the 70s yeah. wow. that are still working in both companies. You know what I mean? So, like, that, that's the type of person you want to learn from. Yeah. So if that guy's giving you shit because you were an asshole, take it. Yeah. Take it. You know what I mean? Because eventually you're going to be able to have a cup of coffee with that guy. You're going to be able to call him on a Sunday and say, I'm having a bad day. What, like, what are you doing? Right. I've stopped by his house while he's cutting the grass and just talked about hunting. Talked yeah. about nothing. Why the trees are green. And those are the relationships that gentle gets you. Yeah. Luke, I know you do quite a bit of that where you're going outside of your way, not to like try and win a job or not to do any of this, but just to like, oh, 
new GC in, in town, mm -hmm. new office, whatever, just walk in and like introduce yourself, give them a business card, shake their hand, tell them what you do. Like, does that shit work? Yeah. Fuck. It does. <laughs> yeah. It I does mean, a lot. What, our new thing that we're doing, <coughs> we've been dropping bottles of whiskey off because nobody can say no to whiskey. Oh, so that's, that's I'll smart. tape a business what kind of card. Whiskey? It's the Bighorn. Oh, from really? Willies, yeah. At our bachelor party, I bought like 20 bottles, and I've been going around town dropping those off. I'm like, not let, trying to step on any toes, but here's who I am. So we do stuff like that too, where yep. I get, I'll get Yeti cups made. Yep. And I'll just drop them off. Somebody comes in, and we we just bought a building, again because of a relationship that I was able to build by being gentle. Yep. And learning, and you know, being honest. You know, if if, if 30 days hit and we still owed them the the money for their their back truck you know hey hey i you know i'm i i, I haven't forgot you yeah and yeah. i haven't forgot you gets you so far no yep. because anybody who tells and this is to the young kids this is to the old guys too because some of them need to hear this yeah if anybody tells you that they don't owe people money in this business they're lying wait you have to owe people money you have in to business yeah you have to no. if, if you if somebody if somebody if luke was to tell me right now you know, I've got a five million dollar business, or whatever you have, and I don't owe anybody money. I tell him he's full of shit, and I'd walk out the door because hmm. he's lying. You you have to be honest with people. You have to call them up, and you have to say, "I haven't forgotten about you. You're first on the list. I'm gonna take care of you." Yeah. And then you, you better take care of. Them. Yeah. And because of that relationship, because of that mentality that I didn't learn until I was 27, 28 years old, that you've already learned. Mm -hmm. You've already learned. Because of because of that mentality my business is it's you you have to learn that from a young age yeah if you're going to be 19 in this business you're fucked like you are <laughs> going to get your ass whooped yeah i mean i'm almost 40 years old and every single day i'm getting my dick kicked in by people i don't even know yeah, yeah. at 19 years old you're not even going to know what fucking hit you yeah you're going to walk in a caterpillar or komatsu or link belt or kubota or whoever and they're going to go you're younger than my children yeah. Get the fuck away from Yeah, we're not going to finance you. I think there's a minimum requirement now. I think you got to be like 21 or older. Oh, really? Yeah. I think, I think so, it's yeah. 22 or 23. 22, yeah, maybe. Really? Yeah. So they did change that. Huh. It's 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 insane. You know, if, if, look, if you're 19 years old and you want to go start a dirt company, I would probably suggest that you didn't. Yeah. I would say, come work for me. Come work for Luke. I would, yep. There's 100 guys. You're 19 years old? Yeah. Pick a guy on Instagram that you respect. Sure. Call him up and say, I can be in Utah on Monday. Can I work for you? Yeah. That guy's going to say, fuck yeah, you can. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Make it happen. I'll guarantee yeah. it. Right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. And Do that. Go all over the place. You're fucking 19 years old. Yeah. Go all over the place. Learn different things from all different people. Do that till you're 25. You come, you come, out, of, you come out of that experience. If, if, I couldn't go to, if I didn't go to college, like if I could do it all over again, that's what I would do instead of going to college. College for me, hey, we're gonna we're gonna piss people off now. College for me was a giant fucking waste of time. Oh yeah, I mean, we've talked about that before. Talk about it all I've time. got I've got fifteen twenty thousand dollars in debt that I yeah. still fucking pay every month three hundred forty seven dollars a month. Thank you, Navian. Go fuck yourself. The it it's a big gigantic waste of my fucking time. Yeah. If if I could have done do it over, I would. And again, we didn't have social media when mammoths were walking the earth when I was you know nineteen years old, but. Make a list, man. Go work for go work for for uh, people all over the place. Go yeah. work for Luke. Come work for me. Yeah. Shit. Go work for you. Yeah. You know. Go go do different things. Go meet different people. Learn different techniques. And then if you still want to do it at 24, 25 years old, come see somebody like me or Luke, and we'll probably say, yeah, yeah, I'll help you get that machine. I'll for help sure. you. I'll help you get that contract. Oh, I got this job. Go do it. You know give you mean? the context of people that we work with well. well exactly. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, how many times? Yeah. How many times does somebody call you? Oh, can you dig? Can you dig this little drain in my backyard? All the time. I'd fucking love to come mm -hmm. dig your drain, lady. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would come by myself with my tool truck, and I would sit there all day, and I would dig your ditch, but I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, I, I can't. Mm -hmm. The numbers don't make sense. They just—it's not even about the numbers. I, I can't tell you how many times I worked for free back in the day. I can drive around my town of Cornwall where I started Cornwall, New York, tiny little town right next to West Point. And I can still to this day, I drive my wife nuts. I'll drive around and I'll be like, oh, that was so-and-so's house. I did that job for free. This is a typical oh, I did that job dad. for free. Yep, built that one. See yeah, that one well, it's <laughs> happening, man. It's so, you know, you, you've got to cut your teeth. 
So you can either cut your teeth, like I did, yeah. making all the mistakes, making all the enemies, building the rap sheet, and, and destroying your credit and your, your name and all of that stuff. You can do it the hard way, mm -hmm. or you can do it the easy way. Yep. Yeah. One point I did want to make as well is uh, we see a lot of guys start in landscaping as yep. well. So they get... Oh, Oh, come on. Let me finish here. They do. They yeah. do. So yep. they are at least... you off, too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doug, as we were just kind of talking, Luke had to go and do his panel at um, Con Expo here. Big time author now. Yeah, big author. Big <laughs> author. Um, people starting their own businesses or working for somebody that they can really create a career out of. You know, and I think that's... You and I are both trying to do that for our people, right? Um, that's what needs to be focused on more, yes. in my opinion, than, oh, I'm going to go work for myself. Correct. Pump the brakes. Correct. Go find a good place to work. Yep. There's, I don't think there's ever been such good opportunity out there. Oh. Like you said, take that 19-year-old kid who does want to be in the dirt world. He could go anywhere. Anywhere. If he, he, he could DM 50 different people on Instagram, and they would probably take him. We're probably thinking about the same people. Yep, easily. Mm -hmm. Easily, because they would take him in a heartbeat. And you know those are, those are great companies to be in, but he'd also get the best education there. Mm -hmm. To where, like you said, if he did want to come back at 25 years old, he would have some rock-solid knowledge. And I, I think in... And to, to go back to what I was saying, if you, think about, if you think about college, right, not many people in our world can just write, stroke a check for college. So nope. we're, we're taking loans and we're doing all these things. So if you take that $30,000 debt that you're going to have, right, at the end, if, if you're lucky, I don't even know what college costs. Mm -hmm. If you take that $30,000 debt and you break that down over six years, yep. 19 to 25, you know, that's, what's that, six grand a year. Yep. Okay, so that's 6000 bucks a year. Go get your education that way. If you want to be blue collar to put a word on it, if you want to be in the excavating field, or the framing field, or the plumbing field, whatever, make that your education. Correct. Go Meet do people, it. people. Do the work. Mm -hmm. Break your ass. Focus. And then, and then go from there. Yep. Make the contacts. And, you know, don't get yourself arrested for dumb shit. Yeah, don't get that, arrested. That'll, that'll probably help you. That'll take, yeah. <laughs> That'll take a little bit more time to get things right. No, no doubt about it. And I mean, there's nothing wrong against college. Again, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from starting their own business, but just in today's day and age, I think social media connects everybody. And you have, again, and that not huge opportunity there. No, and that was kind of my topic that I wanted to go is, people don't show the bad on social media. All you show is the good. And you said it earlier, you know, if I wanted to post more and show you how great I am, I could, right? And right. then you would have all these pictures of your new pickups, your new machines, everything. But yet that, you know, it doesn't show 90% of your business. Yeah. It's not sexy. And that was the whole point of me coming on here today is to kind of tell people like, hey, you can be a fuck up. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can have a terrible upbringing. I, I did not. Yep. But you can tell, you can, you can have the worst of the worst coming up. And you can still be somebody. Correct. Just don't, just be gentle. Mm -hmm. Just, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do, make, make the right decisions. Correct. Whether it's college or working for somebody or joining the military or whatever, just make the right decisions. Yep. You know, and, and be honest. Honesty is key. Honesty is huge. Honesty and just doing what you're going to say you're going to do. Yeah. And massive. if you can't do it, say, hey, I overpromised. Correct. This is what I can do. Does that work Fess for Fess up to it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, again, for you and I's standpoint, that's a huge opportunity in the contracting field because there's a lot of people that can't fess up. It's I, ego. It is ego, and they, they, they lack the communication. I, I, I kind of touched on this on the panel. It's where they overcommit, they, they can't deliver, and yet they just ghost people. And then that's how contractors get bad names. We just got a phone call actually on, uh, I think it was Monday afternoon. My estimator's been working on a job for a, for a local prison, and it's a... Six hundred thousand dollar job, yep. uh, prevailing rate job, and all kinds of pipe and utilities and everything. And the guy comes back and tells us that your number is not in our budget. So how about we pay you your prevailing rate mm -hmm. plus twenty percent? No, because the twenty the prevailing rate's only twenty grand. Mm, true. Yeah. So what are you going to make four grand a week? No. But people will jump on that. They will. We said no. No. People will no. We, this is our price. Take it or leave it. Yeah, I took that the wrong way. I thought you were talking prevailing with like time materials. On no, I was like, fuck, I would take no. that. They're they're paying for all the material, but what pays for your diesel fuel, Correct. your machine time? Correct. And it's two hours through security every day yep. to get in, and two hours out. So you're only working four to six hours a day. No, it's not worth it. No. <laughs> so they um, 
So my point is, most guys would jump on that. Mm -hmm. And what he did was he, he worked around my estimator and came to me and said, hey, we're ready for an approval. Send us all your paperwork. And I was like, what fucking approval? Like, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't approve of it. We didn't agree yeah. to anything. You've never even had a conversation with me, and I'm the guy with his name on the side of the building. Yeah. So he was like, well, you know, we're just we're ready to get the job rolling. And I'm like, nope. Not through us. But somebody, one of these overpromising contractors that, that don't realize how important it is to be honest. And no. I'm not perfect. No. I, I'm sure there's somebody who's going to listen to this and say, Doug's the biggest piece of shit coming or going. Yeah. It is what it yeah, is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If, sure. if that's how you... If that's what you think, sure. cool. No. Like you're entitled to that opinion. You're not wrong. I'm sure at some point in my life, I did something that did not sit right with you. But you have to, you, you have to be honest. And there are, there are people that are going to jump on that job. Yep. Because they're, all they're going to see is, oh, it's a $250,000 profit. Correct. No, it's not. It's a $250,000 job. When you take that job, you let me know when the auction is. Correct. Yeah, I'm I'll covered. be at your front door. I'm covered. Yep. You don't even need to auction it. Yep. Just tell me what you want. Because people they don't they don't they're not focused. They're not Correct. they're not honest. They're not they're not thinking with their head. Correct. Thinking with their ego. They are thinking and with their ego. And that's the biggest problem with social media. Yeah. I deleted Facebook off my phone. Yeah. I still have it because we do some Facebook marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, with phaser marketing. Yep. The best. Um, they uh, don't let that go to your head, Luke. <laughs> they um, <laughs> So I, I deleted it off my phone, yep. and I haven't had it on my phone in two months. Yep. So nice. Great. So nice. No. Yep. My Instagram posts are maybe one a week. Yeah. And because my work's not coming from there. Yeah. No, yeah. our we're trying to take a different approach on the social media side too. We don't get work from Facebook really. We don't get work from Instagram. We don't get work. I mean, maybe some Google stuff. You know, people search us, but we don't get a whole lot of work from there. We want more people and our target market is on Instagram. They're on TikTok. So we honestly, Taylor White, KWC, he's done, he's kind of staple mark that. And we're just trying to kind of follow that action. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of our, what you we have the same do haircut. What's that? You have the same haircut. I have a better haircut than he has. I don't know. His is, his is much fuller. <laughs> he, yeah, no, Taylor's, Taylor's a good guy. I'm hoping to meet him here. He's actually kind of a mix between me and you. Kind of. Like kinda he'll got tell you exactly what you're thinking. Yep. But he's handsome. But he's light about are. it, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, what a guy. Yeah. But, well, anyway, I mean, I, Doug, I appreciate your time, man. Yeah, man, it was great I to mean, meet you. Yeah. It was great to be here. Thanks so much for your and, time. Uh, and we'll yeah. have to do it again. Absolutely. Because I'm sure there's going to be questions. There will be a lot of questions.